Gulf Shores area. Um, I've been selling for 16 years. My dad was a roofer, so I started out roofing houses and then got into real estate. What's that? Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, roofing houses, you get paid for what you do, so it was a good transition into real estate. And uh, man, it took me eight months to make my first sale, but uh, once I started figuring it out, you know, I made a ton of money when the market uh, really uh, blew up in the mid 2000s. And then when the market crashed, I lost everything and uh, kind of learned a lot of lessons. I came back in 2008, and from the lessons I learned in the crash, I just started doing better and better and better. In 2014, I sold 100 properties, I was the number one. Uh, wow. Yeah, I was the number one real, uh, Remax realtor in Alabama, and then since then I've—I mean, I've done better and better each year. Last year I did 130 sales, um, you know. So this year I've already closed, I guess, 14, 15. So yeah, man, I'm just just a hard worker, you know, that just uh, loves helping people and stay positive, and you know, I don't worry about deals I miss out on. I just keep moving forward. There's an area in Gulf Shores called Fort Morgan. I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with the area? Have you ever been here? Yeah, I've been there uh, quite a few times. A lot, probably a hundred times a year. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, we got... <laughs> we go on the air. Yeah. Uh, we know it. We got Fort Morgan there to the west of uh, Gulf Shores. It's kind of, it's a peninsula that goes out into the Mobile Bay on the north and Gulf of Mexico on the south. And then uh, east of uh, Orange Beach, you get into Florida. We're right on the Florida line. And so you go into Perdido Key. So Perdido Key is probably a 10 mile stretch of beach. And then, um, and then you have to go through Pensacola and kind of go north a little bit and then come back down through Gulf Breeze and hit Pensacola Beach. You know, and and then it just goes down the Florida coast, you know, Fort Walton, Navarre, Destin, Panama City, all that stuff. But the area that I'm in, um, I have my Florida license. And so I do maybe 10% of my deals, I guess, are in Florida, right across the line. 
uh, but most everything's right here in Orange Beach and Gulf Shores. And I do a little bit in Foley, which is just north of Gulf Shores. Um, so that's where I went to high school. Foley, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach is kind of like one area to us locals. You know, how many, as far as my sales go, or just the area in general? Yeah, yeah, I sell, I sell overwhelmingly more condos just because, you know, condos are second homes and investments, and they just turn over more. You know, on average, they turn over every three years, and uh, I think, I think homes turn over every seven years. You know, primary homes, so they just have a higher turnover, and uh, so you know, there's just more turnover. They're they're a really good average price, and uh, there's just more money in the condos but it's not that I you know it's not that I necessarily target condos that's just you know that's just what happens you know I mean I sell houses I sell commercial I sell lots you know I sell whatever somebody wants to do I help them do it it just happens to be they're just more condo sell It just depends on where you are. Yeah, it just depends on where you are and what you're looking for. But yeah, you can get something for three hundred thousand that's really decent. Um, you know, as far as that goes, uh, you could find something two fifty range. You know, um, when you get down to the two hundred range for something that's decent, you're probably really slim. I mean, you're probably non-existent. Um, you know, so I would say two fifty to three hundred. You know, you you can. It's probably slim under 300, but around 300, you can definitely find something that's decent. Okay, and in the condo market, mm -hmm. uh, things like, now we go down and we just, we come around, you know, we go down and we, and whatever, but it seems like the prices have just, well, you have to crash, but the prices have kind of skyrocketed, haven't they, in the last couple of years over there? Yeah, I mean, the, the BP oil spill bottomed our market out, and then 2010 and 11 was the bottom. And then we had about, actually, we had about 18% growth that first year coming back because the prices were so low and everybody wanted to really jump in. So we jumped up a good percentage that first year that we started to increase. And then it kind of came down to 12 and then to 8%. And then we've kind of settled out in that 4 to 5%, 3% kind of appreciation per year range until last year. You know, last year was about 8 to 10%, you know, and that it was a weird year because, you know, the stock market went up the whole year and, you know, everything was kind of just really optimistic, you know, and, uh, so you know, you know, we had a kind of unusual spike last year, but you know, we'll see what happens. January is our slowest month, so we're just coming. We're just coming out of that. Um, the winter, this past winter, was the one of the busiest winters I've ever seen. Um, and uh, of course, January it slowed down finally, and I got a chance to breathe. And then now it's starting to pick up steam again. I mean, I mean, I did well. You know, January I did like 14 deals. So it wasn't like it was down, but it's just a different kind of work. You know, in January, I'm more in the office organizing and making calls and putting stuff together. And, you know, in the spring and summer, I'm showing a lot of property. So it's a different it's a different kind of busy, but I'm still doing deals. It's just a different kind of, uh, you know, a different kind of work. It's a 
it's an incredible place to live, man. Like I said, I grew up here and uh, I've seen it grow from nothing. I'm 36, and you know, I mean, I, I remember when I was little, uh, you know, in the 80s. I mean, it, it was it was nothing down here. So from what it was to what it is is incredible. Um, they just did a a big amusement park up on up in Foley. It has one. R It really is. I mean, you know, they're doing it in phases. So this first phase is this big amusement park. It's got one ride that's kind of like a Busch Gardens, Disney World kind of ride. And uh, and then they have a mall that they're opening up slowly, the, a bunch of restaurants. But eventually they're going to have more rides and they're going to have a huge 100-acre water park. I think that water park, I think that water park's really going to make it um, an exciting place. They also so uh, the city of Foley kind of it was kind of a, a deal they swung with the people building the, the amusement park but they built I don't know how many soccer and baseball fields right next to it and hotels and everything else so you know it it's not a uh, you know a lot of people when it was being built they they asked me you know how it's affecting the market and how do I think it's going to affect the market and I told everybody that I didn't think it would really do much to the market, uh, except for give people just another reason to come down. Um, you know, we haven't seen a spike in prices because of it. We haven't seen, you know, any any real effects so far, except for it gives all the people just another reason to come down. But like I said, when they get that water park open, I really think that's going to be kind of the missing piece of the puzzle for that place to really uh, go to the next level but outside of that man we got the wharf that they have uh, concerts all the time you know we got festivals you know got the oyster cook-off shrimp festival all kinds of different events that happen in the area we got mardi gras parades that are, that are happening this weekend uh, that the, the uh, orange beach has a parade and gulf shores has had a parade for as long as i can remember so there's always something and and one reason i like it better than a lot of places uh on the gulf is is there's so much room you know, it, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach is spread out so much. Destin is so compacted on that little island, and traffic is just traffic is horrible over there. And same thing with with some of the other beach communities. You know, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach is uh, it's really spread out, and it, it's it's just it is, it is man. It's a, it's a really nice quality of life. It is, man. They, uh, you know, uh, back a couple years ago, um, Panama City outlawed uh, uh, alcohol on the beaches during spring break. And so all those spring breakers migrated to our area that year. Well, as soon as they did that, Gulf Shores, uh, Gulf Shores said no alcohol on the beach during spring break from like March 12th or something to the mid, mid April or something. And uh, they all left, you know, and Orange Beach didn't, didn't, uh, they didn't didn't say no alcohol but they were very strict on underage drinking and it cut it right out because they're trying to preserve the family you know lifestyle the family community you know they're, they're trying to maintain that that family atmosphere there's tons of great restaurants uh, you know there's there is there, there's just a lot of stuff going on there's also a state park beach in between Gulf Shores and Orange Beach it's three miles of vacant beach and it's it's really a sight. I mean, it's 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 uh, you know, it's I'm I'm pretty blessed, man, to have grown up here and to be able to do something I love. To be able to do something I love and the place I grew up in is uh, is really really a blessing. That is awesome. How about the condo now? The condo market has increased over the last several years, though, hasn't it? Condo prices. 
Oh yeah, I mean, like I said, last year we did about eight or ten percent uh, appreciation. The year before that was about three to five. The year before that was about three to five. So you know, we've experienced about twenty percent increase in the last three years. Um, I, I'll put it like this: uh, you know, I'm selling one bedrooms on the beach for over three hundred. You know, they're uh, three twenty, three thirty, three ten, two ninety nine, up and down the beach, and those condos were. 400,000 at the peak of the market. So, you know, we're creeping up. You know, we're I've seen a couple sell for 320 and 330. So, you know, we're kind of creeping up. I, I really do feel like, um, you know, I hate predicting stuff because I'm always wrong, number one. And number two, number two, if anybody ever tries to tell you they know what's going to happen, that's because they're trying to sell you something. So I don't ever believe anything anybody says. But but I really do, I, I really do have a feeling that if inflation is going to keep moving the way it's moving, and then they have to raise interest rates to kind of keep up with it. Then I, I just I just have a feeling that we're gonna see kind of a uh, a plateau for a second on prices because they've just went up so much, you know, over the past five years. Um, you know that you know if they raise interest rates, I think you know I think you know we saw eight to ten percent uh, appreciation last year. I just feel like you know it can't keep going. You know what I mean? Um, I would say maybe, you know, a large percentage of them are buying it for both, really. You know, um, they're buying it because they want a place to, to stay, a really nice place to bring their family to the beach and enjoy the beach and then rent it while they're not here and uh, kind of get the best of both worlds. You know, it's like a halfway second home for the family and halfway investment, you know, for for the future. So I think, I think maybe you're looking at a good... 80 or 90 percent uh, are buying with those intentions and then you got the other you know 10 15 percent that are buying it as a second home that don't rent it they just they just buy it and uh, they pay all the expenses and they just want somewhere to go and those people that do that they just don't want to come into a condo or, or their beach house uh, knowing that there's been all kinds of different people in there. You know, they, they want to know when they get there, everything that they that, that was theirs is still right where they left it. And, you know, nothing's been touched and it's a peace of mind type thing. So two completely different clients there, but most most everybody is renting. You're gonna. It just depends on how you buy it. You know, if you if you pay cash, then you're gonna make money. You know, you don't have the you don't you don't have the mortgage to worry about. So normally, if you get a loan and you put the minimum percent down, um, which is twenty or twenty five percent, you're gonna end up basically breaking even every year. Um, if you do make two thousand or three thousand, you're gonna have to put that right back into it with some fresh paint or a new couch or whatever. You know, you're gonna have to. Uh, touch it up and fix, you know, maintain it. So when, when you when you figure the maintenance cost in there, um, you know, and you have a loan, then you're you're going to be breaking even. You know, you might make a little, but you have to put that back into it. And uh, you know, and if you if you pay cash though, then you know you don't have that mortgage. You, you're gonna you're gonna make a little. You're gonna make some money. You know, you might not. You know, you might you may do after you pay your condo fees, your your uh, taxes. You know, any assessments, your your more your rental uh, company fee, management fees. After you pay everything, you know you might walk away with a good 
three, four, five percent, something like that. If you pay cash, you know, and you may do better on some condos and and not as good on others, but. You know, it's it all depends on how you buy it and what your intentions are and what your goal is with with uh, you know with your exit strategy. For those people that bought condos during the crash or you know after hurricanes, whatever, well, yeah, they're you know they're making money up on it. But if you buy something at market value, then, then I agree with you. I think most people probably just have to defray the cost of owning it and having it. Sure, sure. And what you got to think of too is, is you know, when you're breaking even, it's not really breaking even because that's paying the note, and the note is going towards paying that principal off. And so, you know, depending on how long. I mean, during all the last year, got made for you know, even a three hundred thousand dollar condo, you know, that's twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, appreciation's a, a whole different game, though. You know, um, you know, you got to be prepared for if something happens, you can you can still maintain it. Uh, you know, with your with your cash flow. But yeah, you know that that's that's part of the game is the appreciation for sure. Um, you know, that's why I say it just depends on what your strategy is. You know, what your what your end result. You know, what your goals are, and how you're trying to get there, and what what exactly you're trying to do. You know. So, you know, I can sit down with a condo buyer and we can sit down and go through their whole strategy and what they're really trying to accomplish. And we can figure, I can figure out exactly what avenue we need to do and, and which condos we need to look at and so on and so forth to fit their specific strategy. Are there certain, what would you say are the things that a person needs to be cautious of when buying a uh, I think I think down here in, in my area, I don't know about other areas, but ever since Hurricane Ivan, which is 04, you know, 04 was, it was yeah, Ivan was pretty bad. I mean, it was a big one. It hit us directly, and uh, it took out a lot of buildings and houses. But the insurance kind of got flipped upside down for a while, you know. Um, in, uh, insurance rates were really high for, for a while. They've calmed way down. They've, they're really great right now. Um, but uh, what people need to watch out for is that a lot, maybe half of these com complexes have what's called an insurance assessment every year um, on top of the condo monthly dues. See, that, see, there was a law in 92, an Alabama state law, that the association has to cover the insurance on the whole building and all the units in 92. So they, the, by law, the association has to cover that building and your unit and everything. They have to cover it just as the developer built it. So if the developer built it and, and put carpet in the floor and a hurricane comes through and wipes you out, then you get, you get replaced with carpet. If you went in and put tile afterwards, then you don't get you know covered for that tile through the association. You get covered for that carpet. So if you want to cover your upgrade, you need to cover your upgrades in your additional insurance your contents policy so that's two things you really need to kind of think about is is there an insurance assessment because that's kind of a hidden thing a hidden factor so when you talk when you're talking to your real estate agent you know you, you should be asking about you know the dues which all the dues are about you know pretty similar there's a few that are a little high and a few that are a little low and stuff but for the most part they're all pretty close but you really need to watch out for those insurance assessments and some buildings have them and some don't and they can range from a thousand a year to two or three thousand a year it just depends on the building so that's one thing and then you should cover all your upgrades in your contents policy Yeah, 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 and see, and see, that's the great thing too about getting getting a loan. Uh, 
uh, through doing a conventional loan uh, on these condos is that the Fannie Mae guidelines are so strict uh, on condos. They, they literally um, sift through the entire association and determine if that condo association is strong enough for their standards. And they look at the balance sheet, the reserves, how much of the condo dues are getting allocated to the reserves, um, the insurance policy. They want to know if uh, if there's one entity or one one person that owns uh, what percent of the building. There's a lot of stuff they look at that you wouldn't look at yourself. And so it's kind of like they're your partner on the deal. You know, they're kind of looking out for you. So if you get into if you get into a situation where you're going after a condo and you're getting a conventional loan, and Fannie Mae says, "No, we're not. We're not. We're going. You know, we're not going to finance this one because of this," or you know, we'll finance it, but you have to put 25% down, not 20. Those are some red flags. You know that you that you should ask questions. Well, why won't Fannie Mae finance this building, and and or why do they want more of a down payment? You know, so that that's one good thing about about getting a conventional loan is Fannie Mae is kind of your partner on the deal. This is kind of an accounting question, a finance question, I guess. So I thought it's definitely over. I've heard something about uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae and Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, it changes it a whole lot. It changes the interest rate. It can change the down payment. Um, you know, it can change a lot of things. Um, and, and that stuff's always changing too. You know, they're always coming up with new rules and everything. But but it, it does affect it big time. And you you can only own so many of these. You know, you can only have a loan on so many of these things too. You know, uh, you can only have you know one second home. I mean, like for example, I. Uh, you know, I, I just bought my mom a condo to live in, and it's right down the road from my house, and I could That's not... not What's that? That's not good. You don't want your mom just out down the street. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Kind of set well, myself... And kind of set myself up for that one, but yeah, but but the thing was is is I wanted to buy it as a second home because it would have been a better interest rate and a better down payment. But but because that condo was so close to my primary home, they made me claim it as an investment property. They said they said there's no way that you are using this condo that's you know. I guess it's about five five miles from my house, so they're pretty strict on that stuff, you know. Ricky, you have been a fantastic, knowledgeable tip. Now you're with Remax there uh, in that area. Let's give them some contact information so if somebody was, had a question or had an interest in a uh, condo or a real estate in that market, they can call you. How, how would they get a hold of you? Sure. Um, if you guys have any questions about Gulf Shores, Orange Beach real estate market, you can find me a couple of different ways. One way is my website, and that's just rickycaruthrealestate.com. So, you know, my first and last name, R I C K Y C A R R U T H, realestate.com. My cell phone number is 251 752 1138. Um, and you guys can just find me there. Um, and if you have any questions or anything I can ever do for you, uh, you know, let me know. And, uh, you know, it, to me, if, if any of you guys that's listening, uh, you know, get down to the area, write my number down and give me a call. Let me know beforehand. I'll, I'll take you somewhere to eat lunch and, uh, you know, meet face to face and we can uh, chat. Uh-huh. Oh 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. All the Caruso are from over there. That's that's my my great. Let's see, that would be my great grandfather, and then all then ah. then all the relatives before him are all over there in Louisiana. So I have a lot of relatives over there in Louisiana, but I don't know any of them. Absolutely, man. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch up and have some coffee, okay? You, you give me a ring, man. I'll be glad to meet up with you. I appreciate you having me on. I enjoyed it. All right, Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Have a good day.